Welcome to ENG 308, Study Session 2. Types and Essential Studies of Research. Introduction. In this study session, you will learn about the different types of research. Research exists in many types and in various spectra. We shall attempt to classify it into eight types. We also learn about the essential parts of research. Research as a template which must be mastered if yours is to be graded effective. Therefore, the study session will give a detailed description of each of the essential parts of a research. After the study session, you should be able to 1. List the different types of research, point out steps in a research. Types of research Pure and applied research According to Oshuala, 1987-17, peer research is usually concerned with the theoretical aspect of science and only indirectly interested in the practical application which the findings may have. Applied research, on the other hand, is concerned with the practical application of science as well as its theory. They are both geared toward the discovery of truth which in turn leads to the solution of the problem of man. Qualitative research. This involves the collection of data in a natural setting and over an extensive period of time with the aim of finding out the way things are. Qualitative research, according to Uwakwe 1990, seeks out the why, not the how, of a topic through the analysis of unstructured information such as interview transcripts open-ended survey responses, emails, notes, feedback forms, and so on. It does not rely on statistics or numbers, which are the domain of quantitative researchers. Qualitative research is used to gain insight into people's attitudes, behaviors, value systems, concerns, motivations, aspirations, culture, or lifestyles. It may be used to inform business decisions, policy formation, communication and research. Focus groups, in-depth interviews, content analysis, ethnography, evaluation and semiotics are among the many formal approaches or instruments that are used for collecting data in qualitative research. This type of research, however, may also involve the analysis of unstructured material such as customer feedback forms, reports, or media clips. Although this can be time-consuming, especially when manual methods are used. Quantitative research This is an objective method in which information is gathered in large quantity according to the size of the population. It provides sufficient data across the group of respondents that can be used to project or make specific recommendations. It's all about quantifying relationships between variables. Variables are concepts like weight, performance, time, treatment, and so on, which are measured on a sample of subjects, which can be tissues, cells, animals, humans, and so on. The relationships between variables in quantitative research are expressed using effective statistics such as correlations, relative frequencies, standard deviation, or differences between means. According to Hopkins 2008, quantitative research aims to determine the relationship between one thing, an independent variable, and another, a dependent variable in a population. Quantitative research designs are either descriptive, that is subject usually measured once, or experimental, subject measured before and after a treatment. While the descriptive dimension of quantitative research establishes only associations between variables, the experimental establish casualty. ITQ, which among quantitative and Qualitative research uses 
larger volumes of data. ITA, quantitative research. Survey research. Study specific group or population by selecting and studying samples chosen from the population. It goes beyond mere data collection. It interprets, synthesizes, and integrates this data, showing the interrelationships and pointing out its implications. It focuses on the determination of the status of a given phenomenon and not on the isolation of causative factors. A survey is a data collection tool used to gather information about individuals. Surveys are commonly used in psychology research to collect self-report data from studied participants. A survey may focus on factual information about individuals or it might aim to collect opinions of the survey takers. A survey can be administered in a couple of different ways. In one method known as a structured interview, the researcher asks each participant the questions. In the other method, known as a questionnaire, the participant fills out the survey on his or her own. Surveys are generally standardized to ensure that they have reliability and validity. Standardization is also important to so that the results can be generalized to the larger population. Descriptive research. According to AZEC 1999, the TOTU 21, it's a scientific method which involves observing and describing the behavior of a subject without influencing it in any way. Descriptive research specifies the nature of a given phenomenon. As the name goes, it describes by telling what the phenomenon is, its nature and characteristics. In descriptive research, variables are described as they naturally occur without any attempt to manipulate them. The relationship among the variables is also described. Many scientific disciplines, especially the soil sciences, use this method to obtain general overview of the subject in that it is useful where it is not possible to test and measure the large number of samples needed for more quantitative types of experimentation. Apart from being used to observe natural behaviors without affecting them in any way, this type of research is also used by market researchers to judge the habit of consumers or by companies wishing to judge the morale of staff. The results from descriptive research can in no way be used as a definite answer or to disprove a hypothesis but if the limitations are understood they can still be a useful tool in many areas of scientific research. This is why a descriptive risk design may be incorporated to support other types like survey, case studies and so on. Experimental research. This is an aspect of scientific method. It involves the use of two types of variables, independent and dependent. The independent variables are manipulated and the effect on the dependent are observed. The purpose of experimentation is to identify the conditions underlying the occurrence of a given phenomenon. And experimental research is also used to establish cause and effect. So this type of study is also often used to determine the effect of a treatment. In a simple experiment, study participants are randomly assigned to one of two groups. Generally, one group is the control group and receives no treatment, while the other group is the experimental group and receives the treatment. The control group is made up of the dependent variable, while the treatment group is made up of the independent variable. Experimental researchers use inferential statistics to determine if the results of an experiment are meaningful. Inferential statistics is a branch of science that deals with drawing inferences about a population based upon measures taken from, from a 
representative sample of that population. The key to determine if a treatment had an effect is to measure the statistical significance, which shows the relationship between the variables in probability. Content analysis, CA. A method in social sciences for studying the content of communication, Babi, bracket year, defines content analysis as a study of recorded human communication, such as books, websites, paintings, and laws. Content analysis is also used in the humanities. This is also known as textual analysis. It's a way by which texts are studied regarding authorship, authenticity, or meaning. Ostley, 1969, defined CA as any technique for making inferences by objectively and systematically identifying specified characteristics of messages. It involves analyzing, evaluating, and interpreting written and visual materials. CA can be quantitative or qualitative. Content analysis, according to Berelson, 1952, is a research tool to determine the presence of certain words, phrases, concepts, themes, characters, or sentences within text or set of text and to qualify this presence in an objective manner. To conduct a content analysis on text, the text is coded or broken down into manageable categories on a variety of levels, word, word sense, phrase, sentence, theme, etc. And then examined using one of the CA's basic methods, conceptual analysis or relational analysis. The results are then used to make inferences about the messages within the text, the writers, the audience, as well as the culture and time of the messages. Content analysis can indicate pertinent features such as comprehensiveness of coverage or the intentions, biases, prejudices, and oversight of authors, publishers, as well as other persons responsible for the content of materials. Case study. Case study involves the collection of data ob observations personal or group, interview and documentary evidence. In a case study, a phenomenon is observed either by a person or group. Data from manifestations of the phenomenon is collected and analyzed. The findings are then generalized to cover the entire phenomenon. A case study is an eye in depth study of one person. In a case study, nearly every aspect of the subjects for example, the person being studied, life and history is analyzed to seek patterns and causes for behavior. The hope is that learning gained from studying one case can be generalized to many others. Unfortunately, case studies tend to be highly subjective and it is difficult to generalize results to larger population. Hint, case studies involves beaming the touch of research not on the whole of something but on one of the parts that make up the whole one for example may research on nigerian education sector with secondary school in your state as a case study essential stages of research before a research is undertaken the first thing a student needs to do is to specifically identify the research problem this could be developed from the hunch gap in the literature, limitation of a previous study, or an interesting issue or problem, event crisis, and so on, affecting human beings in the society. After the problem has been clearly specified, the research has almost started and has to take the following parts before it is developed into a paper or dissertation. Topic, introduction, statement of the problem, Purpose of study, hypothesis, significance of study, scope of study, definitions of terms, review of literature, research method, analysis of data, summary of findings, 
biography choosing a topic a topic has to be chosen not only because every research project should have a topic but more importantly to capture the research problem or the aspect of the research problem being studied in choosing a topic the student should consider the following one the topic must be researchable this also relates back to whether the problem is researchable or not some problems are philosophical in that they can be discussed but no objective evidence can be provided as solutions in this same way topics made out of such problems are likely not researchable for example the topic should university students work to support parents is born out of philosophical issues in a society two apart from being researchable research into a problem must be feasible this means that students must make sure that data are available for the research that there are enough financial resources to carry out the research that there are enough literature to handle issues and expect to carry out expert analysis on the samples and so on therefore for one to go into a research project one has to satisfy all these factors three although previous studies are considered in choosing the topic the topic should be significantly original in this case it should be capable of adding new information to the pool of knowledge one should therefore not adopt the topic of a previous research because nothing new may be added to knowledge but a reduplication of effort four the topic must be of interest to the student students do not generally put in their best in a topic that has little or no meaning to them this is anchored on the realization that interest sometimes develop with familiarity introduction sometimes labeled background to the study introduction is a part where the researcher explains what arose he or her interest in the problem and why she feels the study is worth pursuing this is established with regard to little or no scholarly attention either to paid to the problem by previous studies after setting the general background the researcher convincingly establishes the need for the study why the information likely to result from the study is needed the statement of the problem this is one of the most important parts of research where the research problem is specified in clear terms statements of the problem should be laid down in brief but quite specific terms so that even a layman may get the idea of the nature of the problem which informs the study purpose of the study this parts out an overview of the study it is also written in clear and concise manner stating the scope of the study this helps to highlight the major aspect of the study and enables the reader to appreciate the nature and scope of the study hypothesis hypotheses are optional depending on the nature of a particular research for example hypotheses should be incorporated if certain variables are to be tested from a particular set of samples to determine the direction of degree of seriousness of the problem in this case statistical tools such as t test and so on are used for the test if used the researcher should state it as null hypothesis a statement that no significant relationships between the variables exist to assist him or her in clearly stating the problem and as a convenient approach to statistical analysis significance of study this part should spell out the beneficiaries of the findings or value of the study it should indicate who benefits from the findings precisely what aspect of the findings they benefit from and how they will benefit from the findings also the impact of the study on the field of study in terms of the scientific knowledge should be stated the researcher may go further to state whether the study is a baseline research or an original contribution scope of the study 
the research must set forth exactly the bounds of the topic in terms of the theories of, to be employed, literature to be reviewed, data to be collected and sampled, and the approach to be used in doing this. These are also known as the delimitations of the studies. Delimitations in Oshuala's 1987-36 view are also concerned with those aspects of the topic or problem that are normally considered to be related to such because of limitations of time, space, physical capacity, or other reasons the researcher cannot or does not wish to include. This may or may not affect the representativeness of the sample of the study or the findings. Definition of terms. This is an essential part of defining the research problem. Here, the terms which have unique use in the study, which are subject to several interpretations by different readers, are explained. Food security, for example, may mean securing food from hungry criminals to some readers, securing food from being contaminated to others, but has a unique meaning in the field of food technology. Review of related literature. This is probably the bulk of the things that will be done in the second chapter of the research writing. This part serves two purposes, to set out the theory of theories and the aspect of theories upon which the study is based, and to examine the current research effort made in the area in order to establish the area of areas that have not been attended to. The first part is sometimes labeled theoretical framework and may be handled more logically with regard to statement of the problem. The second part will usually survey the research previously done on the problem and evaluate what the existing research has and has not been accomplished in solving the problem under study. Research methods of procedure and design. This part may also be termed research methodology. It is another crucial aspect of research where a researcher's knowledge of research itself is tested. The procedure section gives a characteristic picture of the study area, describes the population, sample and sampling techniques, method of data collection and analysis. It should further state the rationale for choosing any of the methods or techniques. The design section explains the research design adopted, for example, whether experimental, survey, case study, and so on, and why it was adopted for the study. A well-written methodology makes it simpler for the reader to see the study as a whole. Analysis of data, presentation and discussion of findings. In most disciplines, the data gathered are carefully analyzed with regard to the research questions and or hypothesis using specific tools to realize varying results. Some of the tools used in analyzing data include tables, frequency counts, charts, mean, standard deviation, t-test, Cronbach alpha, and so on. The choice of which depends on the, what the study set out to look for. These findings or results realized from such analysis are presented in graphic charts tablets and figures to make them easier to understand and more appreciable to use. The findings are subsequently discussed with regard to the variables observed in the findings. Summary of findings, conclusion and recommendations. Here, the findings of the study are summarized in the order of the research questions and or hypothesis guiding the study. They are put in straightforward, simple English. It is from these findings that re conclusions and recommendations are made. The conclusion highlights aspects of the contribution of the study, limitations of the study, suggestion for further studies, and so on. Recommendations feature usually in a research that is solution-oriented. The recommendation takes care of the solution or solutions proposed in the study. Bibliography. This is a list of all the works cited in the research.
ranging from book, articles in books or journals, dailies and periodical, government publications, unpublished materials, internet materials, lecture notes, interviews, videos, and so on. A research writer makes copious use of works done by other scholars in or outside his or our field of study, especially in the literature review part. These cited works are then placed in alphabetical order of the author's surnames. There are many styles of documentation such as American Psychological Association, APA, Modern Language Association, MLA, University of Ibadan Manual Styles, UIMS, the Chicago Styles, and so on. But the style to be adopted may usually be prescribed by the institution examining the research. Study Session Summary in this study session, we have discussed the various types of research, some of which include pure and applied research, quantitative and qualitative research, survey, content analysis, case study, and so on. We also discussed the essential parts of a research, some of which include the research topic, introduction, statement of the research problem, hypothesis, and so on. We indicated that research as a template which must be mastered for effective research writing. We have come to the end of study session two. Thanks for listening.